following on our overview of the endocrine system. In this talk, we will focus on the effects of aging. So, just a quick reminder of the case that we're looking at. You might pause the video here just to um, remind yourself and then we'll revisit the case at the end of this short talk. So objectives for this talk would be to discuss the impact of aging on the endocrine response. And we'll be looking at these significant endocrine pathways and talking about each of them as well. So let's look at the effect of aging on the endocrine system. So to start with, um, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis is affected. There's a decrease in the feedback to the pituitary gland, so an increase in ACTH production, a reduction in the diagonal variation of cortisol, but this is associated with an earlier morning rise in cortisol and an increase in the level of the evening peak of cortisol. Overall, there's a slight increase in production of cortisol and uh, bear in mind that cortisol is a counter-regulatory hormone and therefore raises blood sugar levels and also it has a suppressive effect on the immune system. The thyroid axis is also affected. There's an increase in thyroid stimulating hormone and T4 and a decrease in T3. Older people may therefore present with either subclinical high PER thyroidism or subclinical hypothyroidism, and that's, that's more likely in older people. Um, there's some debate as to the significance of this clinically. However, epidemiological studies suggest that these patients have an increased risk of cardiovascular disease and metabolic syndrome. There's a suppression of the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, particularly because there's a loss of both frequency and intensity of the pulsed GnRH that characterizes this system in younger males and premenopausal females. And there's a loss of the monthly cyclical variation in hormones um, that characterizes the menstrual cycle. In males, there's a reduction of testosterone as well as dehydroepiandrosterone um, and these lead to uh, the reduction in both primary and sex secondary sexual characteristics in the male. There are also more widespread effects such as a loss of muscle bulk muscle strength and a loss of bone strength as well. There, 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 there can be neuropsychological impacts with um, a de reduction in aggression um, and a general reduction in energy levels. Um, with females, with the loss of the menstrual cycle variation in hormones, this also leads to uh, an involution of both primary and secondary sexual characteristics um, as well as more widespread effects um, and increase in the risk of cardiovascular disease, um, decrease in bone strength so osteoporosis and an decrease in muscle strength as well. Again there are some effects on psychological um, characteristics in the female as in the male. There's an increase in parathyroid hormone and a decrease in both the production and metabolism of vitamin D. Both of these act to increase resorption of calcium from bone and promote osteoporosis, increasing the risk of pathological fractures. Um, older people tend to have an increase in insulin resistance, that is resistance to end organs, of end organs to the impact, the effects of insulin. 
there's also a decrease in insulin production and coupled with the increased cortisol this leads to a increased risk of diabetes mellitus and finally there's a decrease in both growth hormone and glarin glarin is produced in the stomach and has an impact on um, muscle strength and growth as as well as an impact on glucose metabolism the overall impact here is again a decrease in muscle bulk and muscle strength and uh, an increase in a decrease in bone strength as well so let's look back at our patient so this elderly gentleman is involved in quite a serious accident his changes in his hba axis will lead to a bigger imbalance between the insulin production and um, the counter-regulatory hormones which would lead to an increased risk of high PER glycemia as we will see in the next lecture there's also an increased risk of catabolism and as we can see the catabolic hormones such as the adrenal hormones and thyroid hormones are also increased as age increases with older people there's also a general deregulation of the immune system um, added to by the effects of cortisol which is at increased levels in age, increased age and therefore there's a deregulation of the immune response which can um, aggravate the tendency towards the systemic immune response in older adults their muscles are weaker their bones are weaker therefore they are more at risk of severe injury when um, faced with serious trauma and their recovery period is also reduced um, so the actual um, length duration and impact of the neuroimmunohumoral response to trauma can be worse in older people compared to younger people which we will explore in the next lecture so again if you have any questions you can bring them up in class this lecture looks specifically at aging in the endocrine system and in the final lecture we will look at the neurohumoral response to trauma thank you